Hey, so it is Introduce a Girl to Engineering Day, um, which I've had in my calendar forever, and I absolutely love this week because it reminds me of um, Bring Your Kid to Work Day, which is, I, don't, I think they're still doing that. Um, and when I was little, I used to go to work with my dad or my mom and sit in the cubicles and watch my dad be an engineer, and so it's kind of cool that now I'm an engineer. Um, so for this year, for Introduce a Girl to Engineering Day, I wanted to um, go over what I do like a day in the life. It's a post that I'm doing as a collaboration um, or a guest post, a feature post for engineergirl.org, which is an organization that su supports girls in all aspects of, um, of their life and their growing up and, um, and becoming adults and choosing colleges and engineering and getting into engineering. So I really love Engineer Girl and so I wanted to do this post for them. Second day hair, black eye and blonde roast, leg day. I wake up with second day hair, sleep reading my emails and Google News Bulletin, which is uh, my Google News that caters to things that I like to look at. Um, it's like five, five top things for that day. My home at home is a 700 square foot box suspended above 6th Street in Austin. It's this box. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm occasionally traveling, but today I lay in bed holding my pop socket trying not to drop my phone on my face. It's raining outside, which is perfectly ironic setting for my presentation today on drought resiliency. As I get ready, I receive an IM from one of the engineers in our San Antonio office. She'll be filling in for me at the client meeting today. So I give her a Skype call while I'm curling my hair. It's not like a video Skype call, just a, a call through my computer, um, through my business Skype. We discuss open submittals, which are documents that um, the construction contractors disseminate to us. So they take our drawings and our specifications, uh, which is our framework about our design and, and how to um, create the project and they submit their means and methods. So what products and what tools and the methods and the licenses for the, the welders and all the people working on their team. They submit those to us as submittals. We have our engineers review them, approve them, and then send them back to the contractors before the contractors can get started. Typically that's how it's done. Sometimes it gets all out of order and we tell the contractor, go ahead, this is critical path. And then later we follow up with the paper, paperwork. Um, it's a lot of paper pushing between the engineers and the contractors and the owners. Um, it's not much to Snapchat about, but it's very necessary for high quality construction and it's the standard industry or the industry standard. One of my favorite parts about my job is mobility and flexibility. My home away from home is in a Hilton Hyatt Holiday Inn in a big city, a central business district or a tiny farming town. Um, or really hard to find even one motel. <laughs> Usually it's in the US, but it's not always. I'm on the go. I head out the door and I say bye to my roommate, Zanza Mittens, who will dutifully keep an eye on all the birds all day. She also makes sure that uh, one would be unable to engineer their way into the food bin. She's uh, what we would call quality control in the engineering industry. <laughs> My street has local coffee shops with vegan food, so I run in, I shake the rainwater off my, uh, my jacket, which has the CH2M logo and a little fleur de lis on it, which is swag that I had designed and ordered from my team in New Orleans. And I, I spent probably too much time uh, making sure that we had the right size jackets. There was women's jackets and men's jackets, and some people got tumblers with the logo on it and the skyline and, instead of the... Um, jackets and I, I put a lot of effort into uh, the swag we gave to my team. Today is a black iron blonde roast day. I take a conference call uh, that is uh, blonde roast like the type of bean and then black eye is two shots of espresso so it's a lot of caffeine. <laughs> I take a conference call with my my Beats headphones on Bluetooth that's a uh, present my mom got me for my birthday last year and I use them for all my conference calls. This call is to coordinate with the leadership team managing an emergency program to ensure the safety and reliability of the stormwater drainage system in New Orleans. I'm, uh, I contributed to the emergency project full time for the past six months, uh, which you all saw on my Instagram. Um, so I maintain a few duties that I can carry out remotely. A lot of it is pushing tasks 
tasks out to other people who are doing it, um, like writing up the monthly report and organizing the closeout documents to um, close out the project and, and give it over to the client, reviewing technical memos and communicating with the communication staff on the client side or with the city. I head to the biosolids treatment plant facility, which is where I will give my presentation on drought resiliency um, to the Texas branch of AWWA, so American Water Works Associ Association. Here I have a chance to network, but I don't really think about it as networking because I think networking is kind of a scary word. <laughs> so I think about it as like catching up with my peers. Um, some of these people that I've worked with before and some of them I want to work with in the future. So I, I keep my ear to the ground. Uh, if I hear anything that's juicy, I'll, um, like, oh, so-and-so quit at this consulting firm, they're at that consulting firm, or, you know, just like the industry gossip, <laughs> I'll text my coworkers and let them know. Um, normally, they already know, and they're like, what box have you been living under? <laughs> and I'm like, well, actually, <laughs> this box, it's like 700 square feet. <laughs> um, Zan's mittens didn't get her wish, so it's not a cardboard box. <laughs> it's got some drywall to it. I explain ASR, which is aquifer storage and recovery, and reuse, so taking wastewater and recycling it for potable use. And I explain it to industry experts in Austin. I'm going to try to upload a video of it in a bit uh, for my YouTube channel, so keep a watch out for that. It feels valuable to be a part of the narrative, you know, to present in front of people who have the capacity to make changes. These are um, city engineers and the facility operators or the people who plan for the next hundred years of water use in Austin. Um, and there are other consultants, which do what I do. And some of these consultants I know um, from grad school, some of them from working in the industry. And there's always um, sponsored happy hours. So um, say a, a pump equipment manufacturer will will organize a happy hour where they'll pay for all the beverages and appetizers and um, people get together and they'll hang out and um, it's it's pretty typical to to have a bunch of sponsored happy hours and they're very much geared towards the young professionals and those of us that like to go out and hang out at a bar after work um, after my presentation, I filled questions about the applicability of my specific technology um, ASR is groundwater engineering, which is a really tiny, 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 tiny portion of uh, water resources engineering, which is a specialization of civil engineering. And civil engineering is like one of the big ones that you've probably heard of before that everybody has heard of. So groundwater is like really small niche topic and ASR is even more niche within the groundwater world. I head to a coffee shop afterwards to work for a few hours with the other hipsters. <laughs> Mobility and flexibility. Uh, this time, not a black eye and blonde rose because I'd like to sleep tonight. <laughs> I take a few conference calls through my headphones. Um, one is with a client about a 60% design package for upgrades to water lines, valves, and water pumps. Um, the other meeting is with a team of our technical design experts out of one of our design offices. So they sit in the design office and they do the same. They just do bottling or just design dams or just do very specific things. And so we grab this the subject matter experts to be to put on our team so that we can have this well-rounded holistic team and I just coordinate with them and they do all the heavy lifting <laughs> and I get to do the fun stuff and sometimes I'll help them with calculations or whatever they need help with. We're rehabilitating a dam that was designed for a 50-year lifespan and that was about 60 years ago so with my one project with the design office is um, figuring out how we can rehabilitate this existing dam. It's a very large dam. After some of the infrastructure failures that have been in the news lately, we want to make sure that we take lessons learned from those projects and we apply them to our projects to make sure we have a versatile, dependable, robust, cost-effective um, cost design. I track every hour that I work so that I can accurately record it on my timesheet and because I do such variable different things all day long, every day, every week, every month, um, sometimes out in the field, sometimes in the office, doing whatever. Um, I track each hour. Some of the hours get charged to my clients' projects if it's associated with their project and if it's something that's overhead, like going and speaking at a conference, um, that gets picked up by a company budget. So it feels a little bit about like being a um, 
and not being a salary employee, so being a, a working an hourly employee, uh, which is a bit of a flashback back to my days at Dona Palace. <laughs> it's leg day. I run home and grab some yoga pants, my moped, and a protein shake for dinner. I head to the downtown gym. Some months, those are the hours that I use to unwind and listen to podcasts while I weight lift. Some months, I have projects that I need to be accountable for, even in the evenings. I'm the annoying person that lays on the gym mat and is like answering my emails. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> um, I make a mental note of how much time I spend so that um, if it ends up being a lot that evening, I can then put it on my timesheet the next day, make sure it's accounted for. Back at home, I post my Instagram, which is at doonandy. My side hustle is sharing my career with the world. Um, some days I have boring days, some days I have awesome days. And I, I want to be transparent and authentic and share it all so that people know what is it that I do and what is the sort of lifestyle that I have and uh, what does it mean to be a one female in engineering, one woman in engineering, just trying to chart my path and not knowing my career path yet, but figuring it out as I go. Um, I run an online group for women engineers that want to be involved in their communities and advocate for the causes that they care about. Sometimes I'll monitor the group. Um, it's The Enginist, it's a Facebook group. And sometimes I get busy working or scrapbooking or reading and I just fall asleep in the evenings. Um, Sansa Mittens knows when it's bedtime. She waits on the nightstand for me to give her treats and I make her do little tricks like going in circles and and sitting down and she doesn't understand why she's doing it. She thinks it's terrible, but she um, she puts up with it just for the treats. <laughs> Tomorrow, uh, third day hair, latte with almond milk, hydraulic modeling in the office. So that's um, my little post for Engineer Girl and I'm really excited about it and I'm excited to share it with you all. So I hope you enjoyed it.